Hey, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to build a data table with Laravel Livewire. Laravel Livewire is something that I use pretty frequently for dashboard applications, uh, pretty much exclusively for building data tables because it makes um, building them so much more um, kind of aligned with the way Laravel works. I used to use jQuery tables and this is much a much nicer way to build data tables. Uh, here's the final product of what I'm going to be building in this video. Um, it's, it's a table of user records. There's 50 of them uh, taken from the database of this project. We can uh, search, oops, so only Joe will come up, search by name, email, and ID. Uh, and the search actually works on all three columns at once. We can also filter by, sorry, order by specific columns. So right now we're filtering, ordering by uh, email rather, and we can reverse the ordering. So it goes in reverse alphabetical order. And we can choose how many records to show per page using Laravel's built-in pagination. So this is the final product. Here's a starting point. Uh, to give you an idea, here is the fresh Laravel 8 project that I have created. The only changes really are um, using the built-in user seeder to, to see the database with 50 users. Um, and I've created just a basic route with a basic controller that we're going to use to build what we saw in the final product. To get started, you're going to want to run composer require livewire livewire. This is going to install livewire itself. After this, there's not really any setup steps um, because these packages are uh, the parts of the package are auto discovered. Um, once that's installed, in my case it is, we now have access to a command called php artisan livewire make and then the name of the actual component you want to build. In our case, it's users table. It says component created. It's created an actual users table class and a users dash table blade.php file. We can see these by opening them up, opening them up here. Users table and the users table template. So the template has nothing in it other than a comment um, and the component itself only renders that template. So right now it's very basic. Um, to show you what I've built so far, we can go to the web file. I have this one slash users route that we see uh, right here. It open, it goes into the users controller index method and basically just returns the users.index um, template, which looks like this. It's very simple. All I've got is uh, just Tailwind and a Google font that I thought looks good. and this is basically the starting point we have. From here on, when uh, when we have Livewire installed and a component created, all we have to do is basically just include Livewire styles right above the closing head tag, ideally, and Livewire scripts right above the closing body tag. And then we can use Livewire's built-in tag to actually render out the component. Because if we refresh now, we've added Livewire into the, uh, into the template um, but there's no component being um, rendered. So just to test, let's add some text into the component template. We can say users table here. And if we refresh, you can see that that text does not come out. But if we use the built-in live wire tag colon and then users table, this is the name of the component template, save that refresh, we can see that users table here actually comes out. So at this point, we have the component rendering on the page. Now it's just a matter of actually making the design work. So I'm going to cheat a little bit for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, it would take too long to build this by hand, and it's kind of outside the scope of this tutorial. So I'm just going to copy and paste the uh, basic HTML version of the final product in here. This contains no um, live wire stuff, and it only has just some uh, blade file uh, output stuff. Uh, this actually won't even work because there's we're not looping over the users here. We're just outputting users. And so the first step to actually make this work is to add a for each users as user and for each. Saving this and going back here. We're going to see that we get an error and that's because we're not actually passing this users we're looping over into the template file so this is very similar to passing stuff into blade files from regular controllers 
we're going to pass in an array into the second parameter of uh, view. And we're going to use a key users because that's what we're looping over. And here we can pass in pretty much anything we want. I'm just going to make a simple query, uh, get all users, make sure this is imported, save that, refresh, and we have the basic kind of uh, starting point ready to actually build something with Livewire. As you can see, there's no pagination, which we'll fix next, but it's showing all 50 records and none of this stuff works because it's not connected, but we'll get that done in a second. So how do we make pagination work? Well, Livewire has some issues with, um, with uh, Laravel's built-in pagination. So they provide a, a trait, I guess, called with pagination that we just include at the top of the component here. Make sure that's imported, save it. And now instead of all, we can just use simple paginate, which is just a preference of mine. You can use paginate too. Um, and let's say get 10 records per page. Well, we refresh and we see 10 records, but we don't see the buttons, the pagination buttons. And that's because in the actual uh, template file, we haven't rendered the, the links out. So um, let's do that. Users collection, arrow links. Save this file, refresh. We now have pagination links. If I click next, we're gonna see records 11 to 20, then we'll see 21 to 30 and so on and so forth. This button will not work after 50 because those records don't exist and pagination officially works. But how do we make this work here? This is the simplest example I can give you of how um, Livewire is gonna handle this. Um, if we choose 25, we want 25 records to come up on the page. So how do, we, how do we make that work? Well, for starters, we need to actually declare a property, a public property. We can call it per page. Let it default to 10. And we could put that in here, this arrow per page. So now we're paginating over the value in here per page, which is defaulted to 10. If we refresh, nothing changes because this selector is actually not bound or binded to this property or model, I'm not sure what the terminology is with Livewire, but um, the way we fix this is by going into the template and finding the selector that actually controls this value. And all we have to do, this is very simple, is just define wire colon model, and per page is the name of the model we want to control. If we refresh, defaults to 10, we can choose 25, and it works. We can go to page two, and it's showing uh, the next 25. After that, this link no longer works because there's only 50 records in the ta table. If we want to choose all 50, it'll show 50. And if we choose 100, it'll still show 50 because there's only 50 records. So this is exactly what we're looking for. And that's how easy it is to, to bind stuff. So um, just including wire colon model equals per page linked these values to per page here, which when changed, we'll change the value put into simple paginate. Very simple. Um, next, I think we can actually make search work now that we know the basic example of how this works. When we type in here, let's say we typed in Nicole, we would want Nicole to only come up unless there was another Nicole by name or a Nicole within the emails here. So let's make this work. First, let's start by declaring a search property and set that to default to an empty string because the search should be empty by default. Next, the way we're gonna query this is by creating a search method on the user model. This is a little bit uh, tricky if you're not familiar with Laravel, but um, I'll explain it as I go. And within search, we're gonna pass in this arrow search. Of course, this method doesn't actually exist on the user model, so we'll build that now right below here, public static function search. And we're going to accept a search parameter. And within here, basically we need to test if search is empty because there's gonna be times where the search query is actually empty and we don't want the um, this method to break if there's no search value. So the first thing we're gonna do is return. We're gonna use a ternary operator. We're gonna check um, if search is empty, if search is empty, we're gonna return a static query. 
which is just means an empty query. We're not going to do anything with the data or search or anything. If it's not empty, we're going to return a static query with a where, an or where, and another or where. Here we're going to query if the ID is like the search. For those of you wondering if this is going to make us susceptible to uh, SQL injection, um, typically I'd say to avoid doing this this way, but where and or where actually escape the values, so we should be okay. So we're going to search if search is like ID or if search is like name, username, and if search is like the email value. The reason we use these is because we don't want the string to be strictly matched to the entire name. If we type in, if someone's name is Nicholas and we type in Nick, we want it, the record to still come up and it will. So if we save this file, go back into here, our search is uh, now, it's, we're querying with that search method. We're passing in the search property value. The only thing left to do is actually make sure that this is actually connected to change that search value as we search. So the way we do this is what we're using wire model search exactly as we did below. Save this, refresh. And if we type in Nicole, Nicole comes up. If we typed in uh, Lockman, this record should still come up. It's not going to be searching on Nicole, but it will find this email. And to give you an example of why we used like, if I typed n.an, only this email will come up because it is finding this. Cool. So that works great. There's just one issue. Whoops. There's just one issue here. Um, every time we type a letter in or make a keystroke, uh, it's going to query the database, and that can get very, very expensive. The way to get around this is to use in uh, to use LiveWire's built-in debounce functionality. So if we type in debounce here, and then specify 300 milliseconds, it will only search every 300 milliseconds. And so every 300 milliseconds at the absolute maximum is, is how many queries are going to be made to the database. And it still feels fast to the user. So that's great. And that, that should be used on any text field input. Because arguably, um, a user will not be changing any of these selectors fast enough to, to uh, warrant using this. Moving on, we have the last piece of the puzzle. We need to make this work. So we want to order by this column, and we want to uh, order by with the direction uh, chosen here. How we do this is by, first of all, uh, declaring the column names within the selector here. So uh, if we want to search by ID or order by ID, we use ID, name, email, and sign up date is just a pretty name for created at. And here, if we want to um, sort in ascending or, or, or descending, we actually want to declare uh, one or zero. So this would denote true or false. If we were had a property here, let's declare them actually, public order by, we want this to default to ID, and public order ascending is equal to true because by default we want to sort in ascend, uh, order by in ascending. Since this accepts a Boolean value, we need to use one and zero here so that when we end up using wire model uh, order by and wire model order ascending, these will actually be passing in as Booleans. Now that we have these set up and the interface will actually update these values, we can just pass in an order by here. So order by, and we'll specify this order by. But you'll notice here, uh, if you're familiar with Laravel queries, order by will not accept a Boolean as the uh, order direction. And so what we can do here is use this order ascending, whoops, and if this order ascending is true, we want to return ascending. If it's false, we'll return descending. 
and this eliminates that Boolean issue and still doesn't look horrible. Sometimes these, these queries get really messy and it's good to refactor. Now if we refresh the page, we can search for uh, records with n in them. Oops, there's a lot of records. So ni in them, so it'll search in here and in here. These are all the records that come up. We can sort the emails or sort by emails. This is in alphabetical order. We can reverse the sort, so it's, it's in reverse alphabetical. And if there was more than 10 records, we can change how many come up and use pagination. As of right now, this is actually the final product. It works exactly as expected. This code will be in the description below for you to take a look at if you're interested. Um, I'm very interested in creating more videos. So if you have any idea um, on what you'd like to see, Tailwind, Laravel, um, I'm a full stack developer, so any career stuff, uh, please do let me know. I hope you enjoyed it. Consider uh, subscribing because I will be creating more videos. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.